All right, what's going on guys? So I wanna start off this review here, taking a look at the inner frame actually. So this is after phases one and two of construction. Phase one is just kind of like the bare essential inner frame. And then here is after phase two, after we bolt up the inner frame with some more parts. And you can see we've got some of the gold plated parts on there, some of the chrome parts in the hands. We've got a couple of photo etch parts on there now as well too. So I just wanna take a look here at the frame with you guys, go through some of the articulation here, just taking a look at the frame. You will also notice that mine is missing one part of the inner frame of the ankle armor and that is because I'm actually missing that part and so I've got a replacement part coming on the way uh, that'll be here but probably not for like another two weeks or something and as I've heard I'm not the only person that came up with a uh, part missing from this kit so just a heads up to any of you guys who are actually getting the kit just make sure you check all your runners right away even if you don't plan on building the kit right away check all the runners first before you chuck it in your backlog or whatever if you're gonna build it later so that way if any of you guys are also end up missing a part you can hopefully get a replacement as well so that apparently some of the very tiny gate technology that they use for this kit uh, just made it so that uh, you know I guess maybe some parts are susceptible to fall off the runner that wasn't really the case for most of the parts most of the parts have pretty normal gates I guess it's just for that particular part it was really small it ended up coming off the runner before it made it into my bag all right so first off up there in the cockpit you can see there's our seated Amro pilot figure there and up here on the head we've got our metal parts for the verniers up there those like clip into place with a little c-clip of the plastic part that can hold them in there so those feel solid don't feel like they're gonna necessarily fall out or anything and then the other metal parts here are these metallic blue thruster bells there for the backpack those are also pretty nice might end up like changing that color on those eventually me personally i'm not sure if i'm totally into the color of those but here on the back of the arms are other metal pieces that's for the magnet attachment for the shield either onto the left or the right side there again now i'm not going to go over all of the articulation at this point because we'll go over that once all the armor is on i feel like that's a more accurate representation there are just a few points that i will point out to you here like in the wrist for example you have this joint which is essentially like a double ball joint you have your standard wrist ball joint there which actually feels a little bit loose at this point hopefully that'll be and feeling a little bit tighter once the armor is on i'm not sure how that might help, but we'll have to wait and see. Then up there where you have those uh, pistons is where you have a second ball joint, so that will move around and you have a little bit of piston detail there, which is pretty cool. So I'm not sure, again, how much of that will actually show once the armor's on, but that's pretty nice in there. Down here in the knee, you have the mix of chrome and gold parts there to make that heat sink there in the knee. Here's where our photo etch parts are so far at the moment, just up inside of this piece. So if I take off that piece there, you can see there's the photo etch part. And there's actually detail underneath that photo etch part, and then you cover that up with a photo etch part, and then you cover that up again with this plastic part. So ultimately, there's not really much of that that's going to be showing, but it's a cool little detail there if you catch it in the light just right. Uh, this piston here for the front of the legs also going to be mostly used for when you're bending the knee. And this bend is a little bit tight, but there you can see. Uh, as you're bending the knee, that piston will be in use there. And as for the insert molded frame or the RG style uh, frame parts for this that some people were concerned about the stability of them, uh, they feel very tight at the moment. So almost like in the lower knee joint there, it almost seems a little bit too tight. So at the moment, everything seems totally stable enough. Obviously, we're going to be adding some weight to it once all the armor and everything is on there. But at the moment, everything feels very solid. You can see we've got clear parts here in the chest where the light is going to be coming through, but that's going to be covered up with some photo etch uh, detail there as well too. To. chrome parts up inside the vents in the side of the head yeah the gold parts there for the joint caps do look pretty cool the chrome parts in the hands are interesting I'm not really too keen on it necessarily but it does kind of help bring out the detail of the hands I suppose that's kind of nice and just in case anyone is interested here is what the core block looks like inside of there in full so this doesn't transform into the core fighter that's a whole separate thing which we'll take a look at here in a little bit uh, but this is just your core block that goes up inside of the Gundam there and if you look really closely it's actually got the little drop down camera which you can flip that back up uh, that will go over the front of his face so that'd be like for the beam rifle camera you can move that part down so that's pretty cool a little detail up inside of there as well too. But all right guys, so here it is now with all of the armor on there and all of the truss frame parts on there as well too, underneath the armor, which we'll see as we start to look at some of the open hatch gimmicks here in a little bit. Uh, those all look fantastic, but man, this kit really comes out looking great. Even though it's not painted or anything at all, it looks super nice just straight out the box. The multiple tones of colors, the two-tone white, two-tone red, two-tone blue, two-tone yellow, uh, all looks really nice. You got all the little bits of metallic parts from the actual middle parts of the thruster bells on the backpack 
and the Vulcans up on the head being the actual metal parts included with this kit to the chrome plated bits like in the elbow and knee joints and also little bits of chrome poking out the hands and things you can see to silver plated parts and the gold plated parts that you can see here and there as well to all those little bits just uh, pop out as extra little bits of detail as well too and it's just a, a lot of detail on there definitely got a really great design on there as well the proportions I quite like they're definitely you know the design and the proportions of this are definitely unique uh, and different for an RX-78 too but I'm pretty in favor of them I like them quite a bit I think the proportions uh, do look really nice some aspects of the design I don't really care for but for the most part I think this kit is looking Fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a closer look and we'll see everything in greater detail here So first of all, let's just start with the easy stuff and talk about the stickers now I put some of the sticker decals on here But as you can see there's a lot that I didn't put on so there's quite a lot of them But I just wanted to put some of them on to give you guys an idea of how they look now sticker decals on any darker colored armor Pieces like the blue or the red parts are not going to be looking that great and especially because they give you like gray ones to stick on the blue So I'm not really sure what the thinking was behind that Around here on the black of the backpack, you can see they're also not really looking that great. On the white parts, you know, they look fine. And on the yellow parts here, you can see I got a couple of those on there as well too. So the sticker decals are, you know, at least for all the white areas looking well enough if you want to put those on. For the foil stickers, there's a couple that go inside to help channel the light from the LED. But these ones go for the head cameras and the eyes. You can stick those on there if you want, but then the light won't be able to come through those clear parts for the LED. So I want to see how the actual LED light is going to come through those eyes and head cameras before I cover them up with any stickers. And then of course you have the plastic stickers which go all around the kit as well too. And I've not put any of these on at the moment because I'm thinking to maybe use some of them once the kit is actually painted. And so uh, they're not exactly the kind of stickers that you'll be able to reuse. So these are basically like foil stickers they seem like with an extra thick layer of just like clear plastic over the top of them so there's this like kind of extra thick to help look like lights rather than like a sticker so you place them around and they look like the kit's got or the uh, mobile suit has like little lights and stuff on it i think ultimately they'll look pretty good there's quite a lot of them though so that's why i say probably on my painted build i may not use all of them maybe just a few so if you want to see how these actually end up looking on my kit you can come back later once i've got the kit all painted for you guys now here is the pilot figures that you get included with this set one of amro and one of sela they both look really nice they're really quite nicely detailed of course, you do want to be careful with these as they're quite fragile, just little pieces here. So when you're uh, cutting off the nubs and things on them, just be very careful with them. You also need to be careful sanding them, of course, because there's a lot of really fine detail you can very easily sand away. But some very nice 160 scale figures to be included here. But then we have one in here in the core fighter as well, too. So this uh, hatch will open up there and there you got your seated pilot figure now the problem that I'm having with the core fighter is that the design I actually quite like it seems like a little bit kind of uh, short and stubby which I guess it usually is but the design I think does look pretty cool it's just that I find the the wings are kind of weak on it and the cockpit hatch also kind of weak that uh, should like stay open I feel like but it just kind of doesn't want to uh, so those parts I'm finding a little bit weak it does have an action base connector which I've got attached on here just this clear part to be able to plug that onto an action base and on that note no action base connector for the actual Gundam so if you want to put that up on action base first of all we don't really have a action base for 160 scale use and this doesn't include anything for that so no aerial poses with this for the time being hopefully they'll come out with some sort of stand for this in the future but the core fighter also has its landing gear there on the bottom which can be closed up you can just close up these hatches on that pretty easily here and back here when you fold those up you can then close up these sections of the wing like that you can also pop open the top here and you've got some missiles that will poke out of there so that's really cool as well just a little nice little gimmick there for that now this will fully transform like that if you wanted to have this transformed like so and if we take the core block out of the gun I'm here you can see how the folded up core fighter is going to compare to the core block that is inside of there so it's going to be looking a little bit different there as you can see but if you're wondering if you can use the folded up core fighter actually in there instead of the core block you actually can and there you go perfectly well with the folded up core fighter in there instead of the core blocks so that's really nice and then the cool thing about that is when you open up the cockpit hatch there, you actually have a clear canopy part in there instead of the core block, which doesn't actually have the clear canopy. It's just open here like that. So you might prefer the look of that. And if you didn't want to open the cockpit hatch this way by popping that part out, you can just lift up the little door there on the front that also just lifts up pretty easily. You just slide that up or down. 
Now aside from the stickers, of course, you do also have the photo etch parts as well, and they're not really all going to be very easily seen, like up inside of there, you've got one up in the chest vents, here in the vents on the knee, inside of there you got a, uh, another photo etch part up inside of there, here inside that little gap detail there in the front of the body, and then here on the shoulder, probably the most visible one there. So that photo, those uh, metal photo etch parts there look really nice, and they just peel on and stick, very super simple, easy to use, and that's really nice. But if you are planning on painting it like me, this is the backing sheet that you get included with that. You may want to hang on to this because some of those I feel like I'm probably going to want to take off and then have to stick and or glue them back on again later. So you might want to just hang on to this backing sheet if you need a place to store them. So once you take them off the kit and you're painting the kit, whatever, just stick them back onto here just for storage so you don't lose anything. So just a little bit of advice there for you guys. So now let's talk about the hands. So the hands are fixed pose and they have the chrome piece inside of there that will give you all that little bit of chrome detail po poking out uh, between the joints and stuff. The one thing that I don't really like about the hand design is that they're designed in a way to have a uh, like dull, I, I don't want to say seam line because it doesn't seem like it's meant to be a seam line. Uh, it seems like that's meant to be a detail, but it just ends up looking like a big massive seam line there on the thumb So I don't really care for that, but otherwise I like the fact that they're fixed pose I know some people just assume that a perfect grade should have articulated hands I don't necessarily uh, agree with that idea. I understand why some people would prefer fully articulated hands I suppose but for me as long as the hands look good That's all that I care about and these hands look fantastic. We do have some different options here So these are obviously the closed fist options here are your options for open hands so again as you you can see you got a lot of nice detail on there. I think the expression for them is okay. Uh, I would, maybe would have preferred two different sets of open hands. One like this, which is not all that uh, stretched out, but and then one that's a little bit more stretched out with the, hand, with the fingers kind of like bent back a little bit, like fully extended out. And then we've got two different types of holding hands. So one set of holding hands here for holding the beam sabers. As you can see, you got that round bit in there for holding onto the beam saber handles. And then one set of trigger finger hands for holding onto the beam rifle. Now, these have a tiny little separate piece that goes like inside the finger there. You're gonna be wanting to be really careful not to lose that piece when you're going through your construction. And just one quick note, while we're here on the hands, all of them have this joint in the base of the hand as well too for extra wrist articulation. And we'll go through all the articulation here in a moment. But while we're on the topic of weapons, here is the beam rifle. I wasn't really super keen on the design uh, ahead of time, but as I was building it, I really started to like this beam rifle design a lot more because it's got a lot of really nice detail on there. So obviously you have the chrome piece and a clear yellow piece there stacked on top of each other for a really nice look for that camera. Uh, all black looks really nice on this with just a couple little bits of gray there. I don't really care so much for the, all these little bits of gold poking out and like this part being gold and then this part being chrome I guess is kind of okay. This one does have some open hatch gimmicks on this as in you can fold out that part and then fold up this part here on the front as well too like that. So that opens up and you got some of that nice chrome detail up inside of there. Also, of course, this side handle will move side to side like that. And this camera mount piece is quite interesting because the camera will, of course, rotate side to side as usual, but there's also a couple points of articulation. The whole camera itself can be rotated around there, and then it can also be rotated at that connection point like that. So you could like rotate this off to the side and have the camera like out doing one of those like that. It's kind of weird. It looks really strange. I don't know, but just because it's not usual for an RX-782's uh, camera mount on the beam rifle to be quite like that. But speaking of mounting it, we can also mount this onto the back skirt by folding out this little gold tab there on the side. You go around here to the back of the Gundam and it's pretty interesting. This part actually, you will rotate this. So you use this little wheel there at the top, rotate that around and that will expose your hard point for plugging that into the back skirt there, right there. And of course our other main accessory here is going to be the shield which is quite big and massive. I put a couple of the big stickers on there as well too. I really like the design of this, looks very cool. Around here on the back you've got the little uh, shield for the window that you can close that just folds up like that to close that up if you want. It's a little clear part in there. Looks really nice here on the back too with this gray part giving you that nice like truss detail there. The handle for this does feel quite loose. That part is not really super tight but that's not really going to be very important actually for holding onto the shield because it's going to be using the magnet which is going to attach onto the back of the arm there for this mounted part. So around here on the back of the arm you just slide up this panel there and that's just a little bit of metal that this magnet is going to plug right onto that just sticks onto there and see it's not even holding the shield in the hand at all and just give it a little bit of shake. Obviously you're not ever gonna actually do this with the kit but just to show you guys how strong the magnet is, you can see 
that that's holding on there pretty well. So that is really quite nice. Now obviously once it's painted and everything, that is going to add a little bit of weight to that. It might be a little bit heavier, but I still think you shouldn't have any problems keeping that shield on the arm there. Now a couple other things cool that you can do with the shield too, is you can actually plug the beam rifle into the back of the shield also. You can, this uh, just plugs up right into there. And this part which is on a track, I think you'll have to probably extend that all the way down to make way for this part there, so that's not kind of blocking that. But uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure if I'll ever pose it like that, and it doesn't feel super tight in there yet. This gold piece is, uh, seems like not quite thick enough to really keep it in there very solidly. But that can do that if you wanted to. And then of course we can also attach this onto the backpack by extending out this piece a little bit here. And you rotate that up and around to something like that. And not only does this handle feel loose, but kind of this whole track does feel a little bit loose. And I think that'll be tightened up you know, once you got some paint or something on there. Uh, but otherwise you might want to just stick something in there to tighten that up a little bit. Now here on the backpack, to open this, it's also a rotating gimmick, but you open up this bit here on the top and you can rotate this part out, which will give you your hard point for plugging the shield into there, close that back up, and the shield will just stick right on into there like so, and then that's good and solid on his back there. So all right, then the last accessory that we need to talk about, of course, here is the beam sabers. Now the beam saber handles are plugged up in here to the backpack as usual. The one thing that I don't like about these is that they're made up of four pieces. The main handle is two pieces sandwiched together, so you have a seam line there, and it's not too bad except for a little bits there of seam that you're probably gonna want to remove. And then the, the end, two end pieces are solid pieces, so no seam going all the way through, but just through like the main center part of the handle there. That's unfortunate. Then we do have the LED light up one, so it's going to be a little bit different. As you can see, the design is basically the same. Uh, straight out of the box, they do seem more noticeably different. I think once they're painted, though, they're going to match a little bit better. But as you can see, like it's got the battery information molded onto here, so that's kind of unfortunate that they did that. It doesn't seem really necessary. But if you're going to have this in hand, then obviously that's going to be covered up. It's just the fact that if you're going to be plugging it onto the backpack, it won't be covered up. And so here's the little switch. It also says on on there. You can switch that on and the battery was included with this, so you've got the battery up inside of there and the light is pretty good. So let's see how this is gonna actually work with the beam saber. So here's that beam saber effect part, plugged into there, very long, looking nice. Let me go ahead and switch it on so you guys can see. Now it's very bright in this room, so it's not going to be as noticeable depending on the lighting in your room, but let's go ahead and switch that on and you can see the difference there off. It just looks like a clear plastic piece on. It definitely does look a little bit nicer. Now it's not like a noticeable difference. If you just had it like that, uh, basically, I think if you took this this effect part and sprayed some fluorescent pink uh, paint on there, uh, this is basically, I think, probably how it would end up looking. Uh, but, you know, lit up with the, the LED does also work pretty well to light that up. So that's not too bad. Let me just go ahead and switch off my main lights here and just try this again. So it's kind of like a more just normal lit room. You can see it does light it up pretty well. So that looks pretty nice. Now, the other function that you can also do with this is plug this into the backpack to light up the uh, thruster bells in the back. So we have a clear part in here going from either side, so it doesn't matter which side you plug it into, going down and then it goes through into the thruster bells here where you've got those clear red parts up inside of there. Now I'm gonna leave the lights off because I already tested this before and I know it unfortunately doesn't work that well. So first of all, the connection here is a little bit kind of weak, wobbly, doesn't really seem that solid, but let's go ahead and turn that on and you can see not much of a difference there, and it's not even even because the light is closer to this side, so this one is actually lit up slightly more than that side, but I mean, just looking at it from any sort of distance, even in not very strong lighting, it's hardly visible. So that's a little bit of a letdown because I was really excited. I thought that was a really cool feature that they were doing for this kit. It was a really, it seemed like a pretty ingenious way to make the backpack light up as well too. Well, I think it was a good idea. It unfortunately doesn't actually work that well. So there's off and let me turn it on again so you guys can see. There you go, that's on. You can barely tell it's on, so unfortunate. I probably wasn't ever going to use that. If I do I end up using this LED beam saber handle, I'll just use it uh, actually in the hand. But I mean, it's still, it was a cool thing to be included, and if you want to use that, I think it is pretty nice. It doesn't really work that well in the backpack, but for the beam saber, it works well enough, I guess. And now finally, the last accessory is of course going to be the LED unit for the body. Now I'm assuming or hoping that this is gonna work a little bit better. So it's got a couple of batteries that you'll have to buy separately. You put in there and it's got two lights, one that will go to the chest and one that will go up to the head. And you also have this little key piece for that, uh, which you can use for popping out the batteries, which should be helpful. And you can also use this for pushing the button. Now, uh, when you push the button, there's a sequence of a few different colors that this will light up in. 
uh, and you can see it'll go there from blue to yellow and you can push this again and it will change colors to different color now it's yellow and green and i think it should just go through the cycle of all these but if you if you push the button it will just switch to the next color it's pink red and yellow you push that again pink on the top red on the front yellow on the top uh, pink on the top red on the front so anyway it goes through a few different color cycles for that there's a blue at the front, yellow at the top again, and uh, it will just automatically turn off after a few minutes. So you, there's no way to really have this in there and just have it on all the time. So you will have to actually press the button, which is a little bit annoying because the process to actually get this installed is a little bit uh, complicated. You have to remove the backpack. You have to open up the chest parts here, remove this bit of frame off the back there as well. Now you're free to remove this part of the head and collar. Once you remove that, here is where you're going to plug the LED up into there. And at this point is when you would want to push the button to get it to whichever cycle you want. But while we're here, we can see how much that's lighting up the head. And it's not that much. As you can see, the LED is on going up into the head there and it doesn't really look like it's that on. So there it went off again, fortunately. So once again, we can see the difference there. There it's off. I'll go ahead and turn it on. You guys can see how much that's gonna be lighting up the head. Uh, let's see, there we go on uh, you can tell the eyes are blue and then kind of changing to yellow there and so you can see uh, how much that's lighting up the head and head camera not a whole lot unfortunately so yeah that's kind of a shame let's go ahead and get this back here on the body see how, what it's doing with the chest let's go ahead and pop that back on there put this piece back on close that back up put the backpack back on and then by that time you've only got like a minute left before the light is going to be off you won't be able to see that at all and I think I may have missed it. I think it already went off again. So I had to take the whole thing apart again and turn the LED back on in order to test this out. I'll also go ahead and switch off my lights once again here so we can see how it's gonna look in just kind of a more normal lighting. Uh, I'm still not seeing it. Is it that it's just that dim that I just can't see it at all or did it go off again? Ah, okay guys, I figured out the problem and it's really weird. So inside there, there's that little peg part that's sticking up and it's part of the construction. I've been scouring the manual to see if there's anything about that, but what that is, the problem is that is pushing the button and it seems designed, I mean, there's no way that it's not. It has to be designed that way to push this button. The problem is when you push the button for three seconds, it turns the LED off. So when I'm putting that in there and then putting the backpack back on and then turning it around by that time, three seconds is up and the LED is turning off. Okay, sorry, so I got it figured out. Let me go ahead and switch the lights off again because I know it's just not gonna be all that bright, unfortunately, but the trick to this is to have the chest bent back a little bit, and the point of that is so that uh, this part will be clear of the waist bit. And basically what you have to do is this whole cockpit, cockpit hatch section, you have to remove it and put it back really quick straight away, and that actually pushes that button inside there on really fast. If you pull this out and then leave it if you don't if you're not super quick with it and then put it back it won't do anything but the trick is to do it really quick pull it out and back in there and it should turn it on let me see it's an ingenious idea but it's kind of tricky to do it there we go uh, so it is actually on now and it's going to go through the light cycle now and again like i said uh it's hardly noticeable unfortunately so it's a cool gimmick of how you turn that on so you actually don't have to take apart the whole body in order to turn the LED on. That's pretty cool the way they did that. Uh, I kind of wish they would have done it in a little bit easier way because this is not exactly the easiest part to, at least for me, I'm not finding it very easy to pull that and put it back on there really fast. But you know, it's, it's something, it's not that difficult. I guess it's easier than taking the whole backpack off there and everything, so that's good. So it's a really cool, ingenious idea of how to do that. The problem is just that, the, again, the LED is just not bright enough to really be all that visible. If the LED was much brighter, it would be so much better. It'd be such a cool gimmick if you had some really nice, super bright light coming out of there. So I guess it's something to look into modifying with some custom LEDs or something like that. But so starting off here with the head, that can go all the way up there. And you got that really nice piston detail inside there as well. So nice upward movement there for the head then down all the way to there. That looks really nice. As you guys can maybe tell, open hatches here on the head are going to include this one. There on the top, you got that nice silver plated truss part there inside. Here on the side of the head as well too, these will also open out like that. And again, nice silver truss part inside there as well. Here in the shoulder, this whole shoulder section will slide out to the side there for extra movement to get that more to the front. It also will all move to the back there like that. 
This panel on here on the top will also move up like that, and it's not necessarily like for open hatch, but that's for better articulation upwards of the arm here, so that will all move up like that. That part will fold up, and then you can just actually rotate the arm up. That way you can bring the arm up nice and far there. That's looking really nice. Close that back down. Our shoulder armor will of course just rotate here and also flip up on its own there like that. Once again, we got the nice photo etch part there on the side and the open hatch gimmick for the shoulders is that these front and back parts can kind of fold down and out a little bit. You should then be able to also fold that up there like that. So that's kind of how that's extended out. And again, we got some nice truss detail up inside of there as well too, if you guys can see that. That looks cool. So on the front and back, you can extend those panels out here on the front of the arm. You can open up this panel here as well too. That opens up like that. And this panel here on the inside of the forearm will also open up. You can pop that open. You got some more of that silver plated truss detail up inside of there. The arm itself will just rotate there at the top of the arm. As you can see, we'll close that up just to be safe. Uh, got a full double joint there in the elbow, of course. And some nice separation of these bits of armor around on the back side of the elbow joint. That looks very cool. And you got the gold plated parts inside the joints there as well. Here on the front of the torso, these panels will also lift up. So you just extend these out and fold those up like that. And again, some nice truss parts, uh, plated parts up inside of there. The chest vents also move, uh, which I don't necessarily really care for because you know, what happens usually is they end up getting moved in the wrong way accidentally and then you have to kind of readjust them. But those can all be rotated there as well. And you guys saw how the cockpit hatch opens up, but this front panel also will just open up on its own here as well too. So there's with all three of those panels there on the chest opened up, looks very cool. And then as for the articulation in the torso part, and obviously with the core fighter or core block plugged in there, you're not gonna have much uh, bend in this section, but it actually bends like kind of above where the core block would be. So it's gonna be a little bit kind of tricky here. There's like between the red and blue parts inside the frame there, there's like an accordion section where it like expands out. So basically you can kind of raise that up a little bit and then you can get a little bit more bend forward and back there at that section. So it's usually it would be like in this section of the torso that it would bend, but this one's a little bit higher just because you got that core block in there. So a little bit of articulation there is quite nice. That said, side to side bend, of course, nothing that we're gonna be able to really do with that again, just because the core block is inside of there. But of course you have some rotation there at the connection between the top and bottom half of the body, of course. Just going back around here onto the backpack, where you've got some movement, basically the beam saber handles can be moved around there. Also these thruster bells and you got this little panel here which will lift up. I know this is black so it's going to be a little bit harder to see but that panel will lift up and that will allow you to bring this thruster belt much farther up there like that. These panels will open up and you'll see you might want to have a set of tweezers on hand for opening the panels. I'm finding it very useful. So those panels open up and that looks really cool. So you got some really nice detail up inside there in the backpack. This part, top part folds up too as we saw earlier but you got some more uh, truss detail up inside there. I'm gonna just go ahead and rotate this back around so I'm not gonna stick the shield back on its back again. But that is really nice. Then moving down here to the skirt section. Now this part uh, pushes down into there, which I don't really like because I always end up pushing it in there on accident. But then you can pop that back out. But with a little bit on the top there, just push that back and that will fit that back out into the front. This lower panel here also will fold down there like that. And you got a nice little silver plated detail part up inside there. Uh, for the front skirts and back skirts, they're the same. So once again, you have a, a footage part inside of there. That's pretty nice. The side part will extend out to the side a little bit. And then once that is separated, you got a little bit of a gap there, then you can rotate that out to the side like that. And these yellow parts will also open up. You can flip out this part here that opens up like that. And you can actually pull this out a little bit further, I noticed. You can actually pull that out. So it's kind of separated out away from there a little bit and have it opened up like that really far open that also looks really cool the side skirts also will slide it down this this little part will just slide down ever so slightly just like that exposing a little bit of uh, frame detail up inside there not really a whole lot but it's something so again all the the two front skirts and the two back skirts are the same so they all will open up in that same way as for the articulation of them they will move up to what would seem to be completely out of the way there for your legs now the legs as they are as you can see will only kind of go up to there now there is a gimmick in the hips that will give you better hip articulation for that as well apparently what you need to do is grab it by the front and back sections and both sections will kind of fold down towards the middle 
you can see the whole thing just kind of popped up like that let's let me just go ahead and do that again show you guys so that's folding it in and then when you fold this down like that that will actually just kind of like raise up the upper body a little bit more to give you more of a gap to get that leg up a little bit higher up to basically 90 degrees so that's really cool the side skirts as well by the way will also just fold up like that so you can get the leg kind of all the way out to the side as well also once again some nice uh, detail up underneath those uh, skirt parts and up inside of here as well too that section that these skirt armor bits are plugged onto that will also sw swing like front to back as well too i think it might be easier to just remove this section of that from there for you guys to see so you can see this section will move front to back like that swing in that way so that's part of the insert molded parts you get for this like the rg style frame parts is the part inside of there that will move side to side or actually front to back. So in short, some very interesting engineering here around the waist section. Let's go ahead and head down to the legs now. So the legs are going to work pretty normally in terms of the articulation for them. Basically, we have a nice knee bend here with separation of that uh, knee armor piece like that. Once that is all separated, you have this part and then this part actually separated as well too. You can see the piston red part up inside of there also. So that's all looking very good. Interestingly, the thigh armor doesn't slide like you might expect it to. Uh, just the frame part slides inside of there, but the armor itself doesn't actually move. Then down here in the ankles, of course, we can move the feet side to side. The ankle armor will move up and down. The foot itself, the toe will bend like that. You can point this whole thing down all the way down to there, but again, without an action base to stick this up on, pointing the feet down like that, not really gonna serve too much of a purpose, and you can bend that more forward again like that, bend this up all the way to there for doing some at least nice on the ground action poses. Now, a lot of really cool panels here on the legs. So first off, at the top, this little panel will open up here on the front. On the back, you have kind of the same thing, a slightly different shaped panel, but that will open up there on the back of the thigh as well. Here on the knee, we've got two panels, one there with that really cool heat sink detail inside there as well too. This one here also open up like that. And down here, this whole part of the front of the shin will also extend out and then open up like that so again really nice detail up inside of there as well that one as you can see a little bit looser but just once you kind of get it in place there just kind of rest there like that and then as you might be able to tell these panels here on the sides on the inside and outside of the calf will also open up so you kind of need to pull that out away from the leg a little bit and you can have that opened up like so down here on the ankle armor these panels will also open up on both sides of the ankle armor you can have those opened up like that and then here on the toe also that little part will flip open up like that and the last but not least around here on the back of the leg as well too you can pop open that little bit there as well so plenty of armor hatch opening gimmicks there and we should also not forget to show off the bottom of the feet now again it's probably going to be on the ground most of the time so you'll never see this but that's a shame because there is a lot of nice color separation here on the bottom of the feet as well i wasn't really into the look of those being clear red but once the kit is all done i think it doesn't look too bad they look kind of cool with those being clear red but i just love all this color separation there with the gray and red parts separated there like that it looks really nice all right, and then just for a real quick size comparison compared to the Master Grade 100 scale Gundam Verka and then the HD 144 scale Revive Gundam, it's pretty interesting the scaling of them. I've never, I don't know if I've ever really noticed this before, but the 144 scale compared to the 100 scale, it basically comes up to about to the waist, and then the 100 scale compared to the 160 scale, it also comes up to right about to the waist of the Gundam. So. Uh, it's just kind of an interesting thing that I'm only now noticing for really for the first time. Well, so there you have it guys. This kit is pretty awesome. The whole Unleashed concept of combining all these kind of newer aspects of or just like the finer things of Bandai's uh, development over the past few years all coming together for this kit is pretty there. I mean, the LED aspect of it is still, I mean, I think Bandai's weak point. Their LEDs have never really been that great. At least not something that would be comparable to what you could just build on your own, which would still be better at this point. But other than that, the general ease of construction of this is something that's not to be overlooked as well too. For people, this is something I get asked uh, quite a lot, or I see people asking like, what's a good first perfect grade to build? And this one, while it may seem very complex and it's got like the photo etch parts and the metal parts and uh, the LED unit in there, some people may think that this may be overwhelming for a beginner, but honestly it's not. This kit was super easy to put together. It was uh, very much like building a master grade basically. I mean, 
they had a lot of a lot more parts and everything being being a perfect grade but as far as just like it's kind of just the ease of how everything goes together i didn't really get hung up on anything or have any like problem areas putting the kit together it went together really nicely the engineering of it is super nice and just the planning of it out on the runners as we saw in the unboxing just uh, the manual how the manual is laid out how the runners are laid out do they just make it really super simple and foolproof for you to build this kit uh, really without any trouble at all well, it may not have an action base or any way to be on an action base at the moment. You can still do some cool poses with it just as it is. I mean, honestly, I kind of like the kit just looking awesome, just like in a kind of plain standing pose. But you can do some action poses just on the ground as well, too. So there is a lot of articulation in, built into it, and you can definitely take advantage of that just on the ground as well as if you were to make some way to actually elevate it as well too then of course you could take full advantage of all that articulation but aside from all of the awesome articulation that you can get out of this frame just the whole aspect of all the armor uh, hatch open gimmicks as well too are just super cool it's something that's not necessarily new we've seen it all the way since the original perfect grade of this kit that was like one of its key features as well too but they've really taken it up a notch definitely uh, with adding a lot more open hatches on this and a lot of little ones and bigger ones and there's just a really nice mix of that and you've got lots of really nice detail uh, underneath. There are some of the hatches where I wish that there was a little bit more detail underneath to be honest. There's a lot of really great detail in the frame that actually gets kind of covered up and even with the hatches open you still don't really uh, ever see that unfortunately. So definitely if you were to get the clear armor set for that that would be one way to show off some more of the detailed inner frame. But the uh, pre-molded frame parts, the insert molded frame parts like similar to RG style in there in the arms and legs and in the waist section. A lot of people were concerned about those uh, having issues with not being strong enough to take the weight of the larger kit or something but so far I've not even noticed them at all. I mean I and just working with the kit now that it's actually built I wouldn't even notice that those are even in there. Uh, it, it feels very super solid, very sturdy and I don't think that those are going to be an issue for this kit whatsoever. Uh, whether them being too weak or too strong uh, in the knees like the lower joint of the knee I, I keep finding to be quite stiff uh, so be a little bit careful with that you know just bend the joints and everything you know very intentionally and very carefully you know handle the parts uh, not like a toy obviously but all in all I think Bendai just did an amazing job on this kit now people get a little bit burnt out of Bendai releasing RX-78 2s all the time I understand but this is definitely a big step up from the old PG I think just in terms of looks in terms of quality in terms of like the gimmicks and things that it has there's a lot more going for it than the original PG I don't think that the original PG is completely useless at this point I still think that's a pretty cool kit on its own uh, just for what it is and this one being much more expensive as well too depends on really what you want to do with it but I think overall there's a lot more to enjoy with this kit of course it also comes with a much higher priced tag so that's something that's going to be you know maybe not worth it for a lot of people as in terms of my personal opinion if I think it's worth it or not uh, I do just because I think there's a lot of really cool detail and gimmicks especially with the armor hatch uh, opening bits and uh, all the frame parts the truss parts of the frame are really super cool as well too unfortunately you don't end up being able to see a lot of that once the kit is all put together but it's really fun to put together and you know you can leave certain armor parts off or you know have the hatches open and you can see some of that stuff underneath there so it's not completely lost on the kit the led aspect is there as well too i feel like it's not really that much uh, that's not really that exciting part of the kit to be honest it's cool for the beam saber but other than that uh, it's not something that I would consider too much when weighing if this kit is worth it to you or not. I mean, it's got the LED effect, um, it's, it's fine, but it's certainly nowhere near my favorite part about this kit. There's a lot more to enjoy about this kit other than that, really, to be honest. So that's going to do it for my review, guys. Hopefully this was uh, thorough enough. I'm sure there's like small little bits of articulation or something like that that I probably missed somewhere along the way, and you guys will let me know in the comments. So thank you for that. But as always, guys, a huge thank you to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible. I know these kits are now have arrived at USA Gundam Store and are starting to go out to you guys. So hopefully those of you guys who did order from there uh, should be getting your kits in the very near future. For anyone else looking to get this kit, I believe that the pre-orders should still be open for when the next batch is due to arrive from Bandai. Hopefully that won't be too long for you guys and you should be able to get your hands on it pretty soon. But of course you can check out everything else there at USA Gundam Store as well too. Just check the link down below and you can use my coupon code there, ZAKORILIUS10, to save 10%, especially for a big hefty price tag kit like this. You know, knocking 10% off that will get you, you know, a nice little extra bonus kit you can throw in your cart basically for free. And as always guys, thank you to you so much for your support as well. Whether it be liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that is greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much and thank you guys for hanging out. Those of you who hung out and watched the live build as well too. It was a lot of fun building this kit live with you guys and hopefully that was uh, cool for you guys to watch as well also. So 
All right, guys, that's it for today. Have a great New Year's holiday, and I'll see you in 2021. Bye, guys.